Um, this morning uh, we are at the camp, so I believe that God has a message for us. My presentation is titled Vessels. Second Timothy chapter two, verse twenty twenty one. You know, this scripture was written at the end of Paul's life when he was about to depart. This was actually one of the last letters, last letters he wrote to his son in, in, in the Lord about leadership. Timothy. And he wrote to him and said to him that the time of my departure has come. Okay, but I'm going to share some profound nuggets. The reason why God used me. The reason why I was not part of the 120 who received the Holy Ghost. And yet I wrote one third of the New Testament. The reason why when Jesus was ascending to heaven there were 400 disciples that witnessed it. But none of them had impact like Paul. Jesus had 12 disciples who became apostles. But the impact of Paul in the ministry and in, in Christianity cannot be overemphasized. So here Paul, an old man about to leave the scene is about to share his secret thoughts and the reason why God could use him to achieve so much. So Paul began by telling Timothy, and, and this is, he started by actually charging him. That what I'm going to tell you is like, take an oath that you are going to do what I am telling you to do. So he said, I charge you therefore before God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's how he started that chapter. And then he moved down and as you come down, then Paul came to the conclusion and said, Look, in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these things, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctify and meet for the master's use, prepared unto every good work. And Paul began to teach and, and said to Timothy that Timothy if you want God to use you you must understand the principle of the vessels and he started by saying something he said number one in a great house that's the first lesson you need to understand if, as we are getting to the end time our president said something profound he said uh, that we are in the fourth dimension where what God wants to do with us it's higher than what he's done with us. But we must avail ourselves like tools. And so I will put where he said tools, vessels, in order for God to use us. Then Paul said, number one, you must understand the principle of, the principle of a great house. That every believer, every Christian, you belong to a mighty kingdom. Because if you know where you belong to, and where you are coming from and who you are it is difficult for you to be intimidated if you meet an American citizen who is conscious of his Americanness sometimes is so irritating because he knows who, where he belongs to so the believer number one must know who you are if you are going to make an impact as a, as a leader as leaders in every aspect of our lives, we must know who we are in Christ. Not who you are in your tribe. Not who you are by your gender or your nationality. But who you are in Christ. Who you are in that great house. Who you are in that great house. Because, and it also means that you must be able to assess yourself realistically and identify your weakness and your strength and be willing to work on it because the next statement he made is that in the great house there are not only vessels of gold but also of silver of wood and of earth so if you are not conscious of who you are how do you know which vessels are you if you know you are gold then you will do things like gold and if you know you are clay then you can work on yourself by the help of the Holy Spirit to become silver or gold. None of us remains the same. None of us remains the same. Either we are becoming better or we are becoming worse. So Paul started by saying that number one, 
Know the house you belong to. Know that you are. Know who you are. Know your position. If you are in the business sphere, know that God has planted you there for a purpose, for a time like that. I was listening to our judge uh, 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 testimony, and the, the the judgment he gave, it was based on his understanding of his knowing who he is in Christ, that he is sitting there. Making that decision like God will make that decision. And like President said that not only does God, the Holy Spirit want to be in us and use us. But God wants us to become God on earth. He wants us to become God on earth. That's why John said we don't know how he looks like. But when he appears, we shall be like him. It means if Jesus stands by me. There should be no difference in my character, my nature, my authority, and what I can do. Because he said, The glory that you have given me, I have given it to them. And it is the glory that God gave Christ that allowed him to manifest himself on that high dimension. Because when Adam sinned, what he lost was the glory. That's why the Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of what? the glory so jesus said i have given it back to them so you must know who you are in the kingdom number two you must understand that all of us fall in these four categories of vessels i took some cups here i hope i don't get feedback we have this cup what is this one for see right so when you have a visitor will you be able to serve him with water using this Immediately I come to your house and you give me water in this. It's a message. It's a message. Either you are telling me that I am not wanted. Oh, <laughs> there is an issue. I'm alright. So Paul is saying that. If I make myself this vessel. God will use me for tea. He cannot serve wine through me. He cannot serve juice through me. By virtue of. The way I have positioned myself, the only thing God can serve through me will be what? See. Then we have this one. What is this used for? Sugar. And for, for, for the uh, accessories. Due, uh, 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 the, the sauce or whatever. So it means that if I come to your house, you can't serve me rice in this. Except you are Japanese. <laughs> you know the Chinese and the Japanese, they eat. But for us Africans, we don't eat rice in this thing. It's an insult. It means you don't want to give me the food. But you are being economical with the truth. So you brought me this thing. I will never forget it. So the same way, if I make myself this vessel, all that I will be used for is sugar. The best will be jam. But God cannot go beyond that. So he is saying that. Then we have this car. This one is for juice, water. Am I right? But we will not use it for coffee. Am I right? So it means that if I make myself this vessel, God is going to use me to serve water and pour some juice in me. Okay? And then if, if, if Mr. President visits me in the house, I can use this to serve him. And it's acceptable. But if I make myself this disposable cup, when Mr. President visits me in the house, I cannot serve him with disposable cup like that. Except there is no cup. And I will have to apologize and explain. But when he comes, I will need to use this cup for him. So now Paul is telling Timothy, the reason why you have people in the kingdom who are not effective and that God cannot use them for some purpose is because of the vessel they've designed themselves to be. Not because they are not anointed. Not because God has not loved them. Not because God, has not had, that God doesn't have a purpose for them. But because of the principle of the vessel which they are. And that if they want to 
move into the next dimension of their life where God will use them for mighty things, they will have to apply the principle of vessel change. So he moves on to say that there are vessels in the great house, but some of those vessels, they are for dishonoring people. He's it's, it's not talking about the devil's house. He is talking about God's house. But he's saying that the way you position yourself and what you make yourself of will determine what God will use you for. And as men in the business sphere, in the political arena, in the judicial sector, in all spheres of life, my question is, which vessel are you? Before you blame God again, check the vessel which you presented to him. Before you hold God responsible for your, 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 what is happening to you, check the vessel. And that was what Paul was telling Timothy, that my son Timothy, do you want God to use you greatly that like what he is using me to do? Then you must understand the principle of the vessels. So he started by mentioning the first two vessels he mentioned was not their size, but their, the material which they were made of. So he did not mention the size of the vessel, but he mentioned the material which the vessels were made of. And he mentioned the first two vessels he mentioned were metals. And he mentioned gold and silver. What makes, and he, he categorized gold and silver in the same category and then put wood and earth also in another category. So what is the difference between gold and silver and wood and of earth? So we are going to look at it. Number one, let's look at some of the characteristics of gold. The first is, number one, the ability to take pressure and come out better. For pressure, everybody can go through it. But whether we come out better or bitter is a question. If you look at gold and silver, when they go through fire, instead of being destroyed and coming out as ashes, they rather come out purer and their value appreciates. So the next move, God is looking for vessels who can carry the anointing, like our president said. But the vessels that can carry the anointing must be vessels that can take pressure and not change. Vessels that can take pressure and be purer. How are you able to take pressure? Yesterday the Lord told me something. He said the difference between David and Saul was not anointing. Because both of them were anointed by the same prophet. The horn that was used to anoint David was the same horn that was used to anoint Saul. The same oil was used to anoint both. But one became successful, one became a failure. He said the difference between the two of them was the wilderness. The wilderness. Saul never went to the wilderness. David went to the wilderness. It was the pressure of the wilderness that made David, David. It was the pressure of the wilderness that taught David how not to move by the pressure of the people. Because you remember that Saul failed because of the pressure of the people. And David also had the same pressure once in the wilderness. When his, his wife and children were taken away and the men were trying to stone him. And the Bible says, but David inquired of the Lord. At that time he was not a king, he was in the wilderness. So your wilderness experience will tell us which vessel are you. How you handle your wilderness experience will tell us which vessel are you. When God's son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior came on earth and he took the form of man, God had to take him through the wilderness. It was only after 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness that God was sure that this vessel is good. We can use it. How do you manage pressure? If you want God to use you, he's going to take you through the wilderness. His purpose is not to kill you, but to make you better. When the, the blacksmith or the goldsmith puts the, the gold or the silver in the fire, you know, it's not to destroy it, but to make it better. And you know one thing, when the goldsmith is refining silver, the goldsmith will take his tongue, the, the, like the fork or whatever, 
put the uh, fetch the uh, the silver and put it in fire if he's holding it in the fire the fire will be burning the silver for a long time and you know how the blacksmith or the goldsmith or whatever knows that the silver is ready when only he can see his face in the silver until god sees himself through you you are not ready until god can see himself through you you will be in the fire and do you know the most amazing thing about when silver is being refined whilst the 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 the, the smith has the silver in the fire it never takes his eyes off it so whilst you are in the fire god's eye is not off you his eyes is on you because he wants to see himself when he the the the, the, the all the impurities are out of the silver the master sees himself in then he gives himself a thumb out wow ready to be used that is the vessels God is using, looking for. For the next dimension. Because he says, the glory of the former house, the latter house, shall be greater than the former house. It means that God wants to pour anointings greater than Solomon. Can you carry it? God wants to pour the grace greater than David. David is gone you are the David of this generation. Solomon won't come again. You are the Solomon of this generation. If you are waiting for Samson, he's dead. You are the Samson of your generation. Peter won't come here again. You are the Peter of the generation. And God wants to endow us with the same grace which he endowed those mighty men of God who shut the mouth of the lions. But the issue is that when God looks at us, can he see himself as men? Can he see himself in us? The ability to take pressure. The second quality of gold and silver is it is one of the most malleable metals. You can beat gold into a thread and use it to actually sew a cloth. You can, it's also doctor, which means you can turn it into a rod and make a hole through it, like a tube. The question is, how malleable are you to the Holy Spirit? When you make your mind, can God change it? Because that's the leaders God is looking for. God is looking for leaders who are sensitive to the Holy Spirit. The gold leader is the leader who is sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Yes, God said this yesterday, but this morning he says, move to the next camp. If you look at Elijah, there was a time God took him to a place and angels came to feed him. And then over a period of time, God said, move from that place. Move to the brook of Charon. And then birds came to feed him. He drank the water. The water got finished. God said, move on. Now I'm going to go to the widow of Zarephath. Continuous instruction. If you are going to walk with God, you must be willing and available for continuous instruction. The, our personal walk with God as leaders is progressive. That is why when Jesus died, he never stayed in the grave. He moved on. When the disciples came to look for him in the grave, they said, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Some of us have built grottoes in the grave. And we, are, we, we want to see Jesus in the grave. If we don't get him there, we will create him there. But gold is malleable. It's workable. You can work on it. You can beat it. And the beautiful thing about gold is that even though it is malleable and workable, when you hit it, it doesn't lose value. Like wood and, 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 the, and, and the earth, the clay, when you hit them, what happens to them? They break in pieces. But when you hit the gold, it takes the pressure, expands, but it never loses its value. When God hits you and God corrects you, how do you take it? Are you able to receive it? If you are able to receive it, God will use you for mighty things. Because, you know, the kingdom of the devil is also progressive. So it means God must continuously reveal himself to you to handle it. And as businessmen, you will observe that 
even in business if you don't evolve you will die because what used to work yesterday doesn't work anymore we all remember the first mobile phones you remember the mobitel very big but mobitel evolved if you were a company that was producing those big phones and say i am the inventor of it this is tradition this is what must be done only you and your wife and children will use it some time ago car car companies used to produce cars at uh, every three years a new model will come now a year ahead car has been produced so as we are in 2019 uh, uh, um, mercedes is launching their concept car the 2020 car so if you are competing with mercedes with the same market and you refuse to be malleable you are going to die you will survive and moreover the holy spirit may be telling you something in your business that you've not done before but you need to be able to listen and willing to listen in order to succeed because what worked yesterday may not work today or work tomorrow you remember there was a day david went to war and god gave him a strategy to win the war so the next war david was going to the same war with a strategy and god said no this time don't go that way wait for me you hear a noise on the mulberry tree and then you hear the foot of an army merchant after that move into the camp another time he gave them another strategy so god continuously evolves in his strategy even though his identity doesn't change and if we are going to function at the level of gold at the level of gold we must be malleable